Dyadic is a pharmaceutical company working with vaccines, drug development, and production. And with me is CEO, president, and founder of the company, Mark Emmelfarb. So Mark, great to have you here. And um, gosh, this couldn't be more timely uh, with what we're dealing with with COVID-19 and the coronavirus. And let's start with an overall view of dyadic, what you're doing, and I understand you have a proprietary C1 gene expression system that could play a role in a vaccine. So explain to me if I got that correct and what you're doing. Yeah, so what we did is we've developed a technology platform, which you can take DNA genes or genetic sequences, insert them into the cell, the C1 cell. And C1 is a hyperproductive fungal cell line. It produces massive amounts of low cost vaccines or antibodies quickly, cheaply, and in small environments. So we can multiple scales, like flexible commercial scales. We've actually produced proteins from this technology in the industrial world for two and a half decades at massive scale, like 500,000 liters. And if you think about 500,000 liters, think about an oil tanker in terms of a refinery, like in Houston, that's how big that is. Mm -hmm. Because of high productivity and the different demands of a pharmaceutical industry, we had to shrink the footprint so that we can make a massive amount of these potential vaccines for coronavirus, for example, for everybody in the planet. I mean, our goal is, and we believe that we have the productivity output from this particular cell after 25 years of engineering and improving it over time, that we think we can make the 8 billion dosages that the world is going to need in a short period of time at very, very low cost. So the goal here is to be able to find a gene, the sequence, to put into our cells that actually make and make the vaccine create antibodies when you insert it into the body to neutralize the virus. And we're working with some of the world's best and brightest scientists to do that. And the other proposals we have with the European Union, where we've been working with the Zappi Consortium, with Zappi is a zoonic anticipation initiative. And within that group, there's a bunch of scientists that are three of the top 20 coronavirus scientists. And they've been working on MERS and SARS and coronavirus for years. So when the pandemic showed up, it wasn't like, hey, we wanna get involved in the game. They've been playing in this for a long time and they've been doing the study and the research. And they have those genetic sequences that we believe are going to be the right sequences to put into our cell to mass produce the potentially 8 billion, 8 billion dosages of a vaccine that could actually prevent people from getting the coronavirus. So if we want to vaccinate the world, we think we have the technology that can do that quicker, faster, and cheaper, and actually get the results. Because can you imagine today, think about just the genetic diagnostic tests, the shortages. If we show up down the road with a vaccine and everybody doesn't have access, we're gonna have a revolution on our hands. Mm -hmm. So we have to make sure that we do it right. And we, we think we have the right partners in terms of the scientists that have the knowledge to come up with the gene sequences that are going to have the right potential potency and and the effectiveness so you can use a low dosage but very effective that we can produce at very high levels at very low cost mm -hmm. and flexible commercial scale so that's the one program with the european group that came out of the zappi uh, consortium that we've been involved with as well for over four years and in that particular group we demonstrated 35 times higher productivity level than the second place cell line. And now that we've done that and the antigen we've created there, they actually made it for cattle and the Schmellenberg virus or an anti for cattle, it's a cattle treatment. And it protected the cattle extremely well, the challenge test. So not only was it safe, it was effective and can be made at massive amounts at very low cost. So between the Israelis, what they're doing, where we are the monkey in the middle, so to speak, and where we are involved in the whole way from the gene partnership with these collaborators and the scientists to producing that. And they have the animal models that take that forward. So it's not like you create a protein and what are you going to do with it? They know exactly what to do with it. They've done it for mirrors and they've done it for other things as well for these zoonic diseases. So they're skilled in the art of taking these vaccines all the way into phase one and potentially phase two trials. And so that, that's that group. And then we're also working with a scientific group out of the Scripps Research out of La Jolla. And as you know, Scripps is one of the premier non, let's say, public, but a private research group in the United States. And in there, we're working with a company that's a Scripps spinoff called Ufovax. And they have a very interesting technology as well. Again, the gene sequences have to be 
created by these scientists that have the knowledge and experience. And we're gonna be taking those sequences, putting them into our cell and mass producing those as well. And again, we're, we'll have sort of two shots on the apple or two bites in the apple here. And we're working with other companies and governmental sort of agencies, which I can't get into the details at the moment, but hope to be able to soon. So we're really offering this technology, not only to use it for our own benefits, to create these two different vaccines out of the platform to help the Israelis create their vaccines and antibodies, but also to work with anybody that has a gene sequence that they believe is the right sequence to create a vaccine or an antibody so that we can help them mass produce them at flexible scales at very low cost and get these to people where they're affordable. So that's kind of what we're doing in the coronavirus. And there's a lot going on here and even more than I can even talk about at the moment. But Well, I mean, it's absolutely amazing. And um, if we can get a vaccine here soon, I mean, the global population is gonna thank you. And of course that helps the economy. Do you have any idea kind of a timetable when this, like what, how would this work? So you're working with the partners and then what happens next? And then when may it may actually be available to the public? Well, the sequence goes as follows. Somebody does the research, they develop a gene sequence. They test that gene sequence in animal models to see that the performance is there, the effectiveness to basically neutralize the disease, in this case, COVID-19. And in that case, for example, in the case of the Israelis, we're already receiving those sequences and putting them into our cell, which is the second step. We have to take the gene sequence because to make a, a vaccine to produce one, you have to have a gene sequence, and you also need a cell to put them into that can produce, produce those things. And of course, you want one that can produce a lot of it. So the second step, we're in the middle of doing that as we speak. We have the sequences, we're putting them to the cells. That's gonna take a few months to get those where we have stable cell lines. Then they'll take those vaccine candidates and they'll start putting them into the animal models again, now produced from our cell line, and, and see if they actually create the benefits that they expect. You know, like neutralize the, the virus in this particular case. And then once they do that, it goes into a CGMP production facility to make qualities under CGMP for pharmaceutical grade products. And then you put it into a phase one trial. And then after the phase one trial, which is a small number of patients, you go into a phase two trial. And the big question here in the timing is, what are the regulatory agencies going to do? Because the delays are not going to be us creating the vaccine. It's what the regulatory agencies are gonna require and what they're gonna allow shorter sort of time periods to get these things up. Well, thank you so much, Mark. Best of luck to you. And uh, I hope to get an update maybe in a couple of months as you've started some of this testing and got it underway. Well, thank you and best of luck to all of us. Thanks, Mark. Stay safe.